Good morning, everyone. We're glad you're joining us this morning for Glow Kids. Good morning. Good morning. Yay. Um, we're going to sing some songs this morning. We're going to talk about our memory verse. We're going to say a prayer, and then we're going to have a Bible lesson. And Miss Megan is teaching our Bible lesson today. Ooh. Um, so we got some songs to sing. Um, the first song is about two guys. One's wise and one's foolish. Um, um, one, one, um, man built his rock. Uh, that's right. Yeah, he built his house on the rock, the wise and, man, right? And, and the other one built his house on the sand. On the sand, right? And what, foolish. And well, let's let's talk about the fool. Let, let, let's let's figure out what happens in the song. You guys ready? Yes. All right. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rains came tumbling down. Oh, the rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up, and the wise man's house stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand, and the rains came tumbling down. Oh. The floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the foolish man's house went splat. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessings will come down. Ready? Oh, the blessings come down as the prayers go up. The blessings come down as the prayers go up. The blessings come down as the prayers go up. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Great job, guys. You hung in there with me. Good job. I had to take a breath. <laughs> All right. Mr. Bill, you got a couple songs for us, too. What's the first one about? It's about how can you spell? Spell? What are we spelling? I know the song. I know what the song. is it? I am a I am a C. That's, That's right. right. So, uh, so what do we spell? What's the actual word we're spelling? I am a C. Christian. Oh, Christian. Yeah, Christian. Okay. I am a C. I am a C H. I am a C H R I S C I A N. And I have C H R I S T in my H E A R T, and I will L I V E E T T R N A L L Y. Faster. Faster. I am a C H. I am a C H R I S C I A N, and I have C H R I S C in my H E A R T, and I will L I V E E T E R N A L O Y. I'm a C. I'm a C H. I'm a C H R I S C I A N, and I have C H R I S C in my H E A R T, and I will L I V E E T E R N A L O Y. I think I'm getting better at that one. I'm getting way better. Good job, Laura. I've been practicing. All right, you get your wheels out. Oh, Jake, this is Jay's favorite song. Yeah, is it? All right. We're going to roll our gospel chariot. Roll the gospel chariot along. We're going to roll the gospel chariot along. We're going to roll the gospel chariot along. And we won't tag along behind. When a brother's in the way, we will stop and pick him up. When a brother's in the way, we will stop and pick him up. When a brother's in the way, we will stop and pick him up. And we won't tag along behind. 
When a sinner's in the way, we will stop and pick them up. When the sinner's in the way, we will stop and pick them up. When the sinner's in the way, we will stop and pick them up. And we won't tag along behind. If the devil's in the way, we will run right over him. If the devil's in the way, we will run right over him. If the devil's in the way, we will run right over him. And we won't tag along behind. Good job, All right, let's go over our memory verse for today, or for this month. Okay, our memory verse comes from Psalm 22. It's verses 4 and 5. Okay, Psalm 22, <laughs> verses 4 and 5. And it says, In you our fathers put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and we were saved. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. <laughs> Who's that you it's talking about? All of us. Who, who, did, who did the fathers trust in? They trust in God and God delivered them. God saved them, right? That's right. Okay. That's great to know, right? God will save us. Yes. God will deliver us. Yes. Because God always wins, doesn't he? That's right. Yeah, that's right. All right, so we got one last song for today, and then it's going to be our Bible class time, and that's Jesus Loves Me. And we, we like to do sign language for that song, don't we? Yeah. All right, so let's do a quick review. So Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible, the Bible is Jesus' book, tells me so. Little ones to him belong. Link our fingers, right? They are weak, so wobbly legs. But he is strong. Uh, yeah. yeah, the strong, strong. is right. And then yes, <laughs> Jesus loves me. Right? Pretty simple, right? We got it? You guys got it? Okay, let's go. <laughs> Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Great job, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, it's time for our class now, but before we do go, we're going to say a prayer. Will you bow with me? Our holy God, we are so thankful that you are God. We're so thankful that you will deliver us from all kinds of things, from all kinds of bad things, but especially from sin. Lord, we ask that you help us to be good to our friends and our family and our parents and everyone around us. Um, help us to be like Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. It's now time for class with Miss Megan. Bye. Good morning, everyone. It's Megan again, and I'm going to bring you the Bible lesson today. I want to remind you about our theme. Our theme is that God is victorious. And we're going to learn about God's victory through a man called Jacob today. So this story is going to come from the book of Genesis. Now, Genesis, tell me, is that in the Old Testament or in the New Testament? Let me hear it. Okay, good. Old Testament. It's the first book of the Bible. So this is one of the first stories that you might ever read in the Bible if you're reading it from front to back. So we have some characters in our story today that I want to introduce you to. First, we have Jacob. Jacob is the main person in our story. Then we also have Jacob's brother Esau. Then we have Jacob's uncle Laban. And then there's two women in this story, one named Rachel and one named Leah. They'll be very important to our story as well. So lots of characters 
And that means lots of stories to listen for because there will be a quiz at the end. Okay? Don't forget about that quiz. So just to give you a little bit of background, we know that God had a great plan. And God's long-term plan was to send Jesus so that we could live with him forever. In order to have Jesus born on this earth and in his plan, he chose a man named Abraham. And Abraham would be the father to a very special family. That's the earthly family that Jesus would eventually be born into. Now, Abraham, he had a son. His name was Isaac. And Isaac had twin boys, Jacob and Esau. Now, Esau was actually born first. Therefore, he was going to get all of the inheritance, all the money, all everything. Like, Esau was set. But Esau traded all of that for a bowl of stew from Jacob. He traded all of the money and all of the animals for a bowl of stew from Jacob. Maybe we can talk about that story a little another time. But not only did Jacob get Esau's birthright, get all of his inheritance, he also, he also got Esau's blessing. You see, Jacob was a little trickster, and he deceived Isaac, his father, in thinking that he was Esau. And so Jacob got the blessing that said, you will rule over everyone. You will be rich. You will have all the great things in the world. So Jacob stole from Esau twice. How do you think that made Big Brother feel? He was mad. If you grew up where I grew up, you'd say mad as a hornet. Just angry. So Jacob had to get away because he feared for his life. He was so worried. And so that's where our story begins, is in the escape away from Esau. So when Jacob was running away, God sent him a dream. And he said, Jacob, I will keep you safe. And, and that eventually you'll be able to return even to your homeland. You're going to get to go back home and be safe. But I need you to follow me. I need you to trust me. And Jacob said, I'll trust you, God. That's my plan. I'll trust you. In hopes, in, in faith, not in hopes, in real faith that he would return to his home someday. So Jacob's journey took him to live and work with his uncle Laban. With his uncle Laban. And when Jacob, when Jacob started working, he fell in love with a girl. It's a little bit of a love story. He fell in love with a girl, and that girl was named Rachel. I mean, he was goo goo gaga. So excited. Rachel was gorgeous. So he said, Laban, I, I want to marry Rachel. How do I do this, man? And Laban was like, okay. Work for me for seven years, and I'll let you marry Rachel. And, uh, I mean, Jacob was like, whatever I need to do to, to marry Rachel, it's good. And so he worked seven years, seven long years. And on the day of the wedding, guess, guess what happened? Because Laban was a trickster, too. Laban actually sent Leah to marry Jacob. I think Jacob was probably pretty surprised when he didn't see Rachel. So he was like, man, what do I do? I just really want to marry Rachel. He married Leah. And then he worked another seven years. So he worked 14 years. Some of you aren't even 14 years old. 
but he worked 14 years to be able to marry Rachel. And eventually he did marry Rachel. And man, he was happy. He had a good life. Jacob's family continued to grow. And while Jacob worked for Laban, God blessed Jacob, or God blessed Laban. God blessed Jacob. And, and so then Laban's herds of sheep and goats and all kinds of stuff, they were blessed because Jacob was there. So Jacob kind of started talking about leaving. Maybe I want to go home. Maybe it's time for me to go home. But Laban, Laban's like, Laban, Laban knew that, jo uh, that Jacob was the reason he was so rich because God blessed Jacob. And so Laban knew that if Jacob left, he'd be poor. He, there, he, he didn't know what would happen because he knew God would follow Jacob and Jacob would follow God. So if Jacob was gone, who knows what's happened to Laban. So Jacob trying to do the right thing and wanting to build his herd and Laban, Laban thinking, okay, maybe I can get Jacob to stay if I offer him something. And so Laban says, Jacob, you've worked so hard for me and I know that God has blessed you. And so what can I give you to pay for all the work that you've done? So Jacob said, hmm, I've, I've got a good idea. Why don't I take all the speckled and the spotted animals from the flocks? And those will be mine. Now, interestingly, is that the speckled and the spotted animals are the ones that were considered inferior. They weren't as good as the ones that were pure white or pure one color. They were, they just weren't seen as good. And so Laban was like, sure, dude, you can have the spotted and the speckled animals. So remember what we said, Laban's a trickster. So what did Laban do? Well, he sent all of the speckled sheep, all of the spotted sheep, all of the goats, everybody. He sent them with his sons far, far away where Jacob could not get near them. So if there were only solid colored sheep and goats, Laban said, well, we'll only get solid colored babies. So Jacob's never going to leave because he's not going to have his own sheep and goats. I'm set. Well, <laughs> God had a different plan. Just in case you guys forgot, God is victorious and will give us victory. So... Laban's not going to get away so easily. Jacob wasn't deterred when he saw that all of the speckled and the spotted sheep and goats were gone. He had faith. And so Jacob took branches, branches from trees like poplar and almond and plane trees. And when the strong animals would mate, he would stick the branches in front of them. And guess what? Their babies were speckled and spotted. Every time he set those branches out in front of animals that were mating, their babies were speckled and spotted. Now, I don't know if you know this, but that kind of that kind of goes against the laws of genetics because for it for every time something that has no spots to breed and every time it comes their baby comes out speckled and spotted that you know but who was involved in this god was involved in this and so he gave jacob a herd of strong, strong animals. 
Jacob had faith. And God, God is victorious. So God working through nature helped Jacob be free, be financially free, be unburdened from Laban, from untrustworthy Laban. Now, Laban was a little mad because it wasn't supposed to work out this way. Jacob's not supposed to be leaving and having all of these sheep and goats. I sent them all away. So he's mad because Jacob was getting rich. And Laban knew that as soon as Jacob was was good, he was going to leave. And then the time came that God told Jacob, Jacob, it's time to go home. And Jacob's like, oh, that's all I've ever wanted. I just want to go home. And so Jacob talked to Rachel and Leah, he talked to the family, and everyone agreed to go. They should do what God commanded of them. So God helped Jacob win his freedom over Laban. Jacob trusted in God, and it worked out. God is good at victory. And I'm going to tell you something. It's really important. God will make you victorious too. If you have faith in him, you follow him, there's a great victory waiting for us. There is a promise. What a cool story, right? God helped Jacob be victorious and kept him safe and gave him the opportunity to go home. Jacob followed God. He turned he turned around from his early life ways. If you want to read these stories in the Bible, you can go and find these parts of Jacob's stories in Genesis chapters 25 through 31. And I highly recommend that you do that because there's so much goodness in there. Mom and dad, sit down with the kids, read parts of these stories. There's so many good nuggets for us to learn from for today. So, I told you there was going to be a quiz. Let's see what you remember. All right, so just a reminder, our characters are Jacob, Esau, Laban, Rachel, and Leah. All right, let's see what you remember. So the first question, I was Jacob's first wife, even though he thought he was marrying my sister, Rachel. So. Who did Jacob marry at first? Laban? No, not Laban. Leah! Yeah, Leah. I bet that's what you said. I just have something clogged in my ears. I bet that's what happened. Who in our story sold his birthright to his brother for a bowl of stew? And when we talk about birthright, we're meaning his inheritance everything that he was going to receive. Who sold that for a bowl of stew? You guys remember? Esau, that's right, great job. So who is this? Jacob had to work 14 years to marry me. Who is that? R -r 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 Rachel, that's right. Good job. Oh, this one's a little sad. I stole my brother's blessing. Who stole the blessing? That was Jacob. That was a poor decision he made, but he was able to turn it around and God used him in great ways. All right, next one. 
Jacob worked for me and fell in love with my daughter, Rachel. Who is that? Who? Lab Laban. Yes, that's Laban. Good. I stuck these a little too close together. That's okay. You guys got it. All right, last one. I cheated Jacob by moving the speckled and spotted animals so he would never find them so they couldn't multiply so who cheated jacob not esau not rachel laban that's right that's right so the thing i hope that you remember from this story is that god gave victory and Jacob wasn't always perfect. Jacob didn't always make the right decisions, but he followed God when God asked him to follow and God rewarded him for that. And so I hope that you're encouraged by our victorious God. Guys, I love you and I miss you. Let me tell you about what activity we have for you. So on the church website, we have a little coloring page. And then there's also this, this countdown or score, scorecard. God has won twice because he helped deliver Jacob. Satan down one. Satan ain't gonna win. I know that's not proper grammar, but he ain't gonna win. It's not happening. So guys, I really hope that you have a great week. I love you so much. Take care of my little ones. Mwah.